Okay, so welcome to this talk about IoT programming with OpenSUSE. Uh, my name is uh, Klaus Kempf. I'm a senior product owner, currently working for um, the um, CASP offering, the Container as a Service platform. But uh, today, let's look at what is IoT. Why is IoT important to everyone? Um, and since you're all hackers, I'd like to show you a couple of IoT devices and especially how to program them with OpenSUSE. Bit about me, I'm uh, meanwhile a an SUSE and OpenSUSE veteran, uh, 20 years already. Um, oh, uh, active in open source for quite some time, uh, Google knows it all. Uh, privately, I'm a father, a hacker, and a maker. I love Agile um, and, as I said, um, taking care of containers. But IoT, so who knows what IoT is? Who, have, who has heard about IoT? So, uh, okay, not everyone raised his hand. So, IoT is the Internet of Things. That means that everything one day would get get an IP address. Maybe these chairs will get an IP address, maybe um, the uh, pro projector or all already has one, and they all communicate and inter interact. Um, why is it important? Because there's a lot of money behind, simple as that. And if ev um, everywhere there's some uh, Com computer or a device which can, uh, which has uh, a CPU and some means of um, transferring in information. Uh, it is also important to to all of us uh, in terms of sec security and to understand um, what this actually means. Let me start with a couple of IoT device examples. Um, many of you know this. That's actually not the latest version. The uh, newer versions have wireless, but that's not what I'm going to talk about here. Because these things are pretty trivial in the sense of you can put Linux on them and um, treat it as a normal Linux device. What I'm going to talk about is these things. And I have one here. So the little blue thing, which can't, almost can't see, this is an IoT device. The cables and the other thing is just a serial connector, a serial to, to USB. The IoT device is, is here. I have a couple of other examples. So, for example, uh, this one. Again, here, this is the actual um, CPU and wireless controller, and this is just um, a, a serial converter. Uh, this one is quite popular. Uh, as you can see, it has a lot of I opens, um, and all these examples are dead cheap, a couple of euros. So what is inside? Usually um, they are called ESP8266. There is a successor um, that is called ESP32, which I don't have with me this time. They all do wireless, normal wireless. They have a RISC processor and limited, very limited amount of RAM and flash. But they are cheap and they, for a specific purpose, they are wonderful. So what are typical characteristics of IoT devices which uh, I think are important? First of all, these devices are constrained. You cannot run Linux on them. They are 
um, small in terms of memory, they are small um, in terms of CPU power, um, they have usually a handful, maybe two handful of um, pins uh, to interact with the outside world. Uh, almost all of them run uh, on low power, so not the typical USB 5 volt, but 3.3 3, 3 volts. Um, they, some of them have um, analog uh, input, so you can um, have an analog to uh, digital converter. Typical use cases for these are temperature sensors. Um, many of them have um, an I square C bus. This is just um, a, th a three wire bus uh, for a lot of, of uh, other things, sensors, uh, displays, uh, and, and so on. Um, and all of them appear to your um, device as, um, as a serial port. And of course, they all have networking capabilities so that they can interact with the internet. Let's look at networking, IoT networking. This is the whole purpose of these things, that they can, via the internet, connect um, to the world or can be reached from, from the outside. Typical example, and I have a couple of devices with me, is of course wireless LAN. Uh, it's simple, everyone in the room here probably has a device which does wireless. Um, the cost for these devices is small. Um, everyone has a router, we have one I think here, which provides wireless in this room. So this is uh, um, everywhere, and usage cost is also very, very low. So this is positive because here or at a home, you usually have a, have a flat rate um, and so on. Availability is also quite good. I mean, everyone who has a smartphone, smartphones today depend on wireless. They don't work without wireless. So everyone who has a smartphone has a wireless endpoint too connect to, and there um, an IoT device can connect to. Range is limited, maybe 50 to 100 meter. Uh, speed is quite, quite good, usually, uh, and, um, but power consumption is not so good. So running um, such a device on a battery doesn't last long. They, they, they drain a lot of power. Um, so you need, um, f for this, for wireless, you need um, a power outlet and, a, and a, um, a, a power transformer. Then there is BLE, that is Bluetooth Low Energy. Uh, that is relatively new. I think it appeared a couple of years ago. Uh, use of use is not as simple as um, wireless, from my pers perspective. Um, these IoT devices still cost more than, than, than wireless uh, devices. Usage cost is the same. Um, I mean, if you have um, a Bluetooth end endpoint to connect to, then it's, then it's simple. Uh, but they are not um, as uh, available. So, for example, in this room, there is no Bluetooth endpoint to, to connect to. Range is also very, very limited, usually less than a, than a meter. Um, speed is mm, not so very good, but power consumption is really, really low. So running these devices on a, on a battery is, is, is easy. And then, um, that is rel relatively new, this is um, GSM, so the mobile n network to have IoT devices which connect to the mobile network. Uh, ease of use, mm. 
not so easy device cost is compared to the simple uh, uh, wireless devices relatively high. Uh, usage cost is also high because you need a SIM card, you need a um, mobile contract, and um, you pay per um, megabyte. Uh, so um, you can't stream on, on these devices without paying a lot of money. Availability is very good. I mean, mobile coverage worldwide is okay. Uh, speed is also quite, quite high, but power consumption, no. Again, those need a lot of power. And the last, and I think there's a talk about this in parallel, um, is uh, LoRaWAN, the Long Range Wide Area Network. That is something uh, pretty new. Ease of use is um, quite okay because, again, it's like the internet. Problem is device cost. Uh, those devices are still relatively um, expensive, uh, and especially the endpoints are expensive. But the nice thing about LoRaWAN is LoRaWAN, is, um, especially in, in uh, Europe here, is um, growing in the sense of that people provide free endpoints. So cost, usage cost is extremely low because you can connect to a LoRaWAN endpoint and from there um, you have free, free uh, traffic. Availability is not very good, but it's getting better. I think here in Nuremberg we currently have three um, or, or, or four uh, endpoints. End um, so I, for example, um, I'm active in the, in the Nuremberg makerspace, the Fab Lab, Fab Lab Nuremberg, and we are currently in the process of establishing a LoRaWAN endpoint end and provide internet uh, through this. Range is extremely good, um, several key kilometers um, if there is um, especially line of, of sight. Um, speed is very, very low. But that's the purpose. The purpose is not to transfer pictures, but uh, the purpose here is uh, to trans transport s sensor readings like temperature, hu humidity, um, movement uh, or, or so, and power consumption is very, very good. So um, I don't have one of these devices myself, but what I heard, you can uh, run these devices for weeks on a battery because they don't have a constant connection. They just turn on their, their trans transmission when, when needed. Okay, and all these Internet of Things, it is about sensors. This is um, what, what these devices are for. And here is a typical example um, of um, these are the sets you can get on, on, uh, on eBay, for example. And uh, for example, this one here is uh, soil mo most, uh, moisture, so you can check if your plants have enough water. Um, there is a Holz uh, sensor touch. Um, this is ultrasound for prox proximity. Um, there are light sensors and, and, and so on. And such a set uh, costs, I think, 20 euros or so, just to tinker with. So with a sensor and a, um, and a simple um, wireless IoT, you are in the 20, 30 euros range. But you need to program these things. So what do we have there? There is a very simple programming a uh, model, and this is kind of a um, very rough one, but it should transport um, my point. So, 
you have a, of course, you have a CPU core. On top of this, you have a bootloader so that when the um, device starts, that it knows uh, what, what to do. And on top of this, you have the firmware that is, so, so, um, so to speak, the, um, the um, application, um, the, the base application, and then you have um, your, your application. So this is the uh, programming, um, the, the um, runtime environment, and this is your application. Um, usually, you can't change the bootloader. But what you can do is you can change the firmware. This is um, possible everywhere. And then you can have different applications. So let's look at firmwares. If you buy these ESP things, um, then they typically are pre-programmed with um, the expressive AT firmware. So an AT firmware does a modem emulation. So who, who of you is old enough that he knows about modems and the AT command set? Yeah. Um, this is pretty old. Um, these are the things that you connected uh, to your landline. Yeah. And um, I think it was Hayes, a um, uh, manufacturer, who um, standardized this command set. So if you plug these devices in, uh, they appear as a serial device. And what you need is a terminal program, which talks to, the, to your um, serial device and opens to the, to the rescue. There are even two of them. It is Minicom and Picocom. This is what OpenSUSE pr provides. And how it looks like is something like this. So you have every command starts with 80. And then, uh, for example, 80 plus GMR um, shows you the, the version. And then you have 80 plus CWLAP. Um, does a scan of um, available endpoints. And uh, if you download the presentation, um, you will probably see more of it. And then you will see this is an actual screenshot from uh, the OpenSUSE uh, summit in Nashville, uh, where I, I, I tried this out. But you can change the firmware. And for example, the one very popular is MicroPython. Yes, you can put Python on these devices, and you have still room to write a Python program. Uh, um, and what this MicroPython provides is, of course, no graphical user interface or something like that, but the things you need uh, to um, program an IoT device. So you can do analog and digital uh, I.O. You can do computations on these. Um, it has various uh, buses to talk to external devices. And of course, it has an, a TCP IP and an HTTP stack. So your um, I, um, IoT device can provide a web server endpoint and you can connect with your mobile phone or something like that um, with, a, with a browser to this device and read out your temperature or um, the gas, gas uh, sensors. So for example, at the uh, makerspace, so Fab Lab in Nuremberg, um, there's a gas sensor um, for um, carbon di uh, dioxide, and based on this, um, there is another calculation how many people are in the room currently, which is, which is pretty nice. Uh, there is 
also uh, an, another project um, on the internet which does something similar, um, which scans um, mobile um, 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 wireless devices with such a small thing, and based on this um, estimates the number of people in, in the room. An example for uh, MicroPython um, is this. So um, MicroPython even has a, has a help command, and then you can um, scan the network. And at this point, I'd actually like to demo it. So what I have here is a device like this, which is the same like this one. It just has more I, I opens to connect to, and it's a bit easier because it has uh, I can uh, connect a US USB cable. So let's do the real thing. So here's the Python prompt. I can enter help. I hope this is readable for all of you. Um, and here it even says how to um, connect to it. So I can just now copy and paste from here. Import network, then uh, I create a network interface and activate it. And then, oops. And then I can scan. It takes a while. And here it gives you a typical Python uh, list. Um, let's put it a bit m more up. Yeah, this is this is the simplest program. So, and um, you should check on your mobile phones. This is the actual um, endpoints that are available in this room. Uh, so, this is the name of the endpoint, and this is the MAC address, and a couple of more parameters like signal strengths and and so on. Uh, okay, I see at least two who don't believe me and check. <laughs> All right. So back to the presentation. Oops. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah. That was MicroPython. Then there are a couple of other firmwares you can put on. For example, there is Esprino, basically giving you a JavaScript en uh, environment. Node MCU, Lua, um, also simple scripting. There's Basic and more. So if you Google for uh, this, this is really amazing uh, how much possibilities you, you have nowadays uh, to program and, and interact with these devices. Um, Firmware update is also relatively simple. So either uh, you have a device like this where you directly connect um, USB or you get one of these USB to serial converters and a couple of cables. Uh, you just now need to, um, to connect the right pins to put this device into prog programming mode. And then uh, again, open SUSE to the rescue. There is Python ESP tool and with Python USB tool and um, the correct uh, firmware binary, you can flash your own firmware. But no Linux. There is a couple of tools, but no Linux involved. So where is Linux and where is OpenSUSE L? Um, all these devices need to talk to 
some endpoint, and there Linux is uh, everywhere. It is, it is that Linux that holds the internet together, uh, that provides a database um, that runs on gateways um, and, and so on, and that gives you uh, a workstation or a laptop to um, program uh, these devices. Also, you do your software, software development usually uh, on, um, on uh, Linux. Um, then you do cross-compilation, uh, you do um, debugging on, on Linux, and you have your terminal like uh, Minicom. About cross-compilation, you cannot directly um, run Linux or your compiler on these devices. So what is about cross-compilation? Cross-compilation means that it is not your usual software development workflow. Your usual workflow is you are sitting in, on, on the device and you code, you edit, you compile, you link run in the environment your final program runs. You don't have a change of platform. Cross-compilation means that you are developing in a different platform than the f uh, final program. So you need to compile for a different device, you need to link for a different uh, device, and at the end of the link you need to upload it, and then you can run it on the final, uh, final device. And here, um, OpenSUSE has a, um, a huge set of cross toolchain tools. So, for example, there is a cross DCC. That means a normal GNU C compiler, but it outputs code for example for one of these devices. And in order to do this, you need cross headers, cross in uh, clue files. You need the complete bin utils uh, um, chain, like the assembler and, and the linker. And of course, in order to link, you also need cross libraries. And all this is available on Devil GCC in the build service. Here, our GCC maintainer are doing an awesome job of keeping all these cross um, targets alive. So you get the latest and greatest GNU compiler, the complete toolchain, able to cross compile for ARM. Um, AVR is the typical um, device for um, Arduino. Um, you can uh, cross compile for power uh, CPUs um, or um, uh, RISC uh, f uh, 5. Uh, MIPS, for example, MIPS is a typical CPU in a, in a small um, uh, wireless router. So again, uh, kudos uh, to the GCC maintainers at this point. Um, then, in order to develop, there's a very nice um, IDE, and that is called Ar Arduino. So, who has not heard about Arduino yet? Good. Thankfully, every, everyone has. So, a uh, typical Arduino device would be this one. This, for example, has an AVR um, processor and also lots of I.O., uh, but no, no wireless. Uh, newer devices of Arduino look more like um, this. Uh, they have, meanwhile, an uh, ARM core. Um, here they have a newer um, uh, Wi-Fi module. And this little thing here, this, this ugly shaped or U-shaped um, metal plate is the actual an antenna um, for, for Wi-Fi. And with the uh, Arduino IDE, you can directly um, yeah, write your programs, either in a C-like language that is called processing, 
or directly uh, in C or C, C, C++. Arduino IDE is yeah, um, an integrated development environment. Uh, it's um, a Java and it has some Go tooling. Um, and there you have, you have everything you can, um, you have a nice editor, then it calls Arduino builder to call uh, GCC and the uh, linker, and it supports a myriad of hardware devices. Uh, how does it look like? So it typically looks, looks like this. Um, so this is the, the editor window. Uh, you have a, um, a, a check mark button here. This is uh, the comp compile button. And then this little error uh, right next to it, um, th um, this means upload. So you can then upload your, your compiled uh, program. And here, um, coding is um, normal C uh, program. What is extremely nice about uh, the Arduino IDE is that it's easily um, extensible to um, other devices. So just for reference in the, in the uh, presentation, uh, for example, uh, in the main settings, uh, you can enter um, uh, URLs of additional board managers so that it knows about new, new hard hardware, new devices, new, new CPUs. Um, almost every device nowadays has um, uh, such an uh, ex extension, so every time you grab a device, you can add this here, and it's su supported. Uh, a quick look at uh, what this means if you um, download or add uh, such a device. So, for example, um, ESP8266, oh, so the one here um, is called ex Extensa uh, CPU, and when you add this, um, you get a lot of additional binaries, and they all uh, uh, sound familiar. So you have uh, the GCC compiler here, the archiver, uh, runlib, uh, GDB, uh, LD linker, G, G++, um, the complete GNU, GNU toolchain. Um, what is really amazing is the set of libraries, predefined libraries, uh, in IDE, uh, in Ardu, Arduino. You have libraries for sensors, you have libraries for um, complete application web, web servers, you have libraries uh, for dis displays, um, um, for uh, LED stripes, uh, here, just to pick uh, an example, is a, is a Khan con uh, controller. Khan is a typical in industrial bus um, to connect uh, such, such devices. Um, you can also um, uh, update uh, your, your libraries um, in this IDE. Um, it, it's it's ex extremely well integrated. And of course, um, you, have a, you have a boards manager, and here is just a, a typical uh, list of, of um, uh, boards. And even if, if your board is not supported, you can um, adapt uh, everything. Arduino IDE is, of course, packaged in OpenSUSE. It's not part of the Leap distribution, but we have cross tool chain um, a AVR, because AVR is the um, CPU where Arduino started with uh, on built uh, OpenSUSE org. Um, the package for his historical reasons is um, spelled with an uppercase R, but the command is with a, with a lowercase. Um, I adapted it in a way that if you download Arduino from the internet, you get the complete GNU toolchain based on GCC. Six or, or seven, I uh, adapted it in a in a way that uh, first, of course, this IDE is compiled from source, so it's not a re repackaged binary, 
and I stripped all the um, Arduino provided uh, GNU toolchain, and this uses the cross toolchain from um, Devil GCC. Okay, uh, I'm already at the end of the talk. Um, so let's look at IoT programming with OpenSUSE. It is extremely simple and extremely cheap for everyone to start with it. Um, you have many, many sensors, and IoT is uh, all, all about uh, sensors. You can choose the programming language that you are most familiar with, and OpenSUSE, uh, everything is packaged and ready uh, to use. And with that, I'm at the end. Thank you. Questions, please. And we have a microphone. Here, behind. Um, I believe those ESP32 chips, they have Extensa CPUs, and we currently don't have uh, Extensa cross-compilers. So I that's have right. to use the binary blobs that are provided for the Arduino IDE. Yeah, but that's probably just uh, approaching the GCC maintainers and enabling this um, okay. in GCC. I was just pulling for the status. How far are we into this? I haven't looked at this. Okay, thank you. Yeah, because um, I mean, these devices, I. I don't directly um, code in, in GCC. I usually use MicroPython or JavaScript. OK, I see. Of course, if you want to, for example, compile MicroPython from source, then you would need it. Yeah. More questions? No. OK, from the front. With the MicroPython, how do you upload the uh, application? If you write a script or so, how yeah. would yeah. you upload it? You need it? to uh, write a script and then wire a serial device. You can also enter it manually and then store it on the device. I mean, they all have flash, flash um, memory. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I can basically uh, use this reduced plain Python and, and program it like on a normal Linux system, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Can some of the devices be updated over the air? So um, with a low raw... Actually, uh, all of these devices can be updated over the air if you uh, program it. So. Um, for example, um, a German um, um, uh, tool shop called Obi uh, provided um, a wireless um, power uh, plug, uh, which you can, um, where you can via wireless can turn power on and, on and off. It costs 10, 10 euros. It has an ESP8266. Um, you can uh, reflash it uh, with. Um, with open open source uh, application, um, this op uh, open source application then gives you a simple um, web endpoint, so you can connect to it with a with your browser. Um, you can uh, add sensors to it, uh, and it has the capability to download new uh, newer versions uh, from the internet. Nice. Okay, no more questions. Uh, so, if somebody wants to have a look, I have uh, some stuff here in front so that you can see how, how small these things are. Uh, otherwise, uh, thanks a lot and enjoy your day. <laughs>